Good morning, or good evening, or good midday, wherever you are. Let me know if you can see and hear everything okay this morning, my morning. I'm excited to get back into this gal here. The weeks fly by, but it's also, it feels like a long time between scribbles with her. I might just wait one moment more, but do let me know if everything's okay, sound and visual wise. I have got my window open just a little bit this morning. So hopefully it won't get too noisy, but I will close it if it does. The birds are being pretty well behaved at the moment. Hi Nicola, lovely to see you. Oh, that's good, I'm pleased. How's everything way up there? can hear that Coel is still here. <laughs> they usually sort of hang around till Christmas or just after. I think they hope to get a couple of clutches in. Little buggers that they are. We'll just wait one minute more before getting started. I think, like I said last week, we're going to finish off the top of her face here, her eye. Uh, her um, noggin there and come down around the side here and then we'll see what else we can get done as well depending on how many other exciting things we end up chatting about well I'm pleased everything's okay up there too all right well how about we get started I think what I would like to do is actually do more on the top of her head first this morning and make sure to let me know if the birds get too noisy because I kind of tune them out after a while <laughs> they're just like a constant background noise so <clears throat> what I want to do is put some grey in um, where all the, the sort of spotty area is at the top we'll do a bit of it over here um, but it's a lot more substantial on this side so We've got a nice orangey base. I think I'm going to just come in with some grey over the top. And I may adjust these bits as well a little. I was trying to keep like the light area light. But I'm wondering if it might be better to use the slice tool to actually pull out some light. Because there's, there's a lot of it. Um, and it's a bit hard to sort of make that detail otherwise. I am going to grab a... I get a cold grey and I feel like a four is a good choice so just to put in some little grey shading areas and then we'll add some sort of dotty stippling sort of effect for the darker bits and then some of the, the sort of really dark little dots and then we might pull out a bit of white. So the slice tool only really works if you've got enough pigment down and it really needs a light, or well, depending if you want a light, light color coming through of course, it needs a light um, base underneath to work. It works okay on, the, on paper, uh, just plain paper, but nowhere near as well as it could if you've got a light base down, which we have, we've done a nice light base underneath all of these. There's some really happy little sparrows out there lately. They've got babies, so I guess everything's good in sparrow world. I'm 
and I don't need this to be um, photorealistic. Uh, so exactly the same as our reference photo, but I want it to have the, the same sort of um, feeling. I want it to be interpreted well. There's amorous doves out there. I'm just looking at the sound level and it's pretty high with the <laughs> sparrows chirping, so I might close it a bit. They're in the bush just outside my um, studio window here, so it's pretty funny looking at those sound levels and seeing them spike with each sparrow um, squeak. Okay. Um, I want to pump up the orangey yellow colour around that. So I'm going to take burnt ochre and I'll put it down first, but I want a little bit of yellow as well. So I'm just going to put some orangey patches through the grey as well. Just bring up that colour a little bit. Now it's Friday morning here, so I've I worked the f the last four days um, in my other job, and then come home and worked on a links for a tutorial for Patreon, which I am so happy with. She turned out really well, um, but man, I am so tired this week, and I have my mum's seventieth birthday party tomorrow, so. Um, I need to go and get some other bits and pieces for that this morning. Now I have Dark Naples Ochre. Um, I need to dye the greys out of my hair. Um, but I think I'm going to work on another small tutorial for Patreon, but then I want to get back to my Harris Hawk for a bit. I really want to feel it, finish her, um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Let me know what creative adventures are on your agenda for today or for this weekend. Yeah, I think that that's working better already. So I'm going to come back over on this side here and add some of that a cold grey four in. I'm just going to rebuild those layers a bit. Is it a substantially darker on this side? Two. And as usual that process makes me need to darken this part up. Naples ochre in, oops, on this side. Okay, I think that looks okay. I'm going to take a bit of this Naples again on the front of this, these um, face feathers here. I love that there's these two feathers here that kind of slick back and up and over her head like, you know, a bit of an Elvis do. There's less um, 
difference between the feathers just in this V section here and the top of her head than there is on these ones on the side that have a lot of that sort of lighter colouring. And I'm going to grab a bit of burnt ochre again. Bring a bit of that orangey colour back in again. Some one of the Ravens classes. Okay, I always just watch the live stream. Oh, that's lovely. I hope you enjoy the Raven song. Um, I'm really excited to see some of the um, in flight sort of exercises coming through. It just makes my heart sing seeing so many Ravens hanging around. I think it's wonderful. I, I love them. Um, I love that you watch them then watch the replay to work. I do the same thing. <laughs> I think you pick up. It's, you know, there's different ways to work, isn't there? But um, I think that you pick up more if you, you watch it twice or if you watch it and then work on it yourself at the same time again or similar to having classes um, on demand that you can watch. I think you often get more out of it um, if you can watch a replay or work on it a couple of different ways so Oops. Um, I'm looking for my dark sepia now I really 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 need to go and get some more um, pencil extenders I called into the art shop that's local like um, it's a little ways away from where I live but it was close to a meeting that I went to through the week and they didn't have any disaster disaster but I will say that I'm incredibly strong and didn't um, buy anything else while I was there <laughs> the the art shop that um, I'm talking about doesn't carry a lot of supplies for pencil artists it's mostly for painters so um, so I'm going to have to order some pencil extenders online, which is probably a better option anyway, to be honest. Um, right, now I think I would like to do a little bit more of this sort of dotty, darker action. But the, um, the fun of it is going to be not to do too many big dots, but to get that sort of stippling effect that you can see. So you want a nice sharp pencil and some patience <laughs> and again it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the reference just try and capture that uh, it, the feeling of that texture Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day out. We had a real stinker of a day. Uh, I don't even know what day it was now. The days just blend into each other. I mean, seriously, how is it the middle, getting towards the end of November? Um, I want to say it was Monday, but I can't remember now. <laughs> it was like 38 degrees. It was horrible. I hate it. Totally living in the wrong climate. Um, and it's not actually even summer yet. It's just Ugh. Good morning, Louise. How's things across the ditch? Um, yeah, so it, that was really horrible. And then the next few days were much cooler, um, thankfully. And I think it's supposed to warm up again over the weekend. Um, when I say warm up, I mean it doesn't get much below 
sort of mid twenties at the moment anyway. But um, even that's preferable to a 38 degree day. All right, I'm just looking at some of these larger dots now. I woke up this morning desperately craving Vegemite toast and I haven't got any bread in the house. So I just had some Vegemite on some rice cakes. <laughs> All good there. Did you have some really warm weather through the week? I know that South Australia here really copped it and then what usually happens is that Western Australia or South Australia will get some really full on weather and then we get it eventually. Um, but yeah, I was really not at all happy about that 38 degree day. And neither were my poor kitties. They were not happy when I got home. You have a forecast for zero tonight. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Just send a little bit of it this way. Although I know that the birds would not be very happy about it. Um, there's a, I think I've mentioned it before. I can't remember what I've told you, but I haven't. But there's a place in um, Tasmania. I just love Tasmania so much. I'd move there tomorrow. Called Cradle Mountain that I've been to a few times. Um, there's a really nice sort of retreat area there. Um, beautiful bushwalking and stuff, and it's much colder. We, we don't have high altitude here in Australia. But we have alpine regions, and that's an alpine region. Um, hot over here too, but nothing like that. Ugh, you guys are making me jealous. Um, but the day that it was. 38 degrees up here it was like seven or eight degrees down there which just made me want to move there even more and it wouldn't even be so bad if it was hot through the day as long as it got cool at night but it just doesn't do that Okay, those little dotties are coming along. We want to add some... We want to add by sub subtracting some of the light. Now to... I need to make sure I've actually got enough pigment down to do that though. So what I might actually do is take some ivory, my tiny, tiny ivory pencil. And I'm going to go over and blend some of this together and make sure that there's a nice amount of pigment down on the paper. Oops. It's hard with these really little pencils to get the pressure right because you've got to come down quite low in order just to hold it. So I really need to get some extenders. There's one dot there that's really bog bugging me. It's not right. Um, what did I do with that one here? This one here is bugging me. I might scratch around it a little bit. grab my slice tool and hopefully you can see it's a bit hard because you've got to get in you see just using it really lightly to pull out a little bit of the light um, yeah I've got to get in close so that I can control where the blades going 
that makes it a bit difficult for you to see on the camera. That's better, isn't it? I think. But can you see that you need to have some good um, pigment build up for it to show up? got too much light around and I'll probably actually go a little bit darker again too. Um, it just won't. It won't look as bright. Yeah, it's totally getting into beach weather though. Um, I've got burnt ochre again. And I think I'm going to bring a warm um, brown in there too, a bit of walnut perhaps. Just doing some very light glazing over the top. Nothing too hard or dramatic. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of warm. Oh, I'm not going to grab a little bit. I'm going to grab a pencil, which is not very big, and put some pigment down get out of saying a little bit like I'm just picking up a small amount of the the, pig, the pencil um, a little bit of warm brown uh, walnut brown which is a warm brown <laughs> it's around the base bring a warm color in um, and there's actually a little of it up the top of the head there of that warm colour. And now I'm going to get something that's ridiculously bright called Orange Glaze. But it's so nice, done very lightly, used really lightly, to just bring out a pop of the colour that's behind it. So it works really well with oranges and yellows without being overwhelming. I think, you know, if you wanted to, well, on the swatch here, if you press hard, you get this really sort of vivid, um, almost fluoro, well, it's the high visibility jacket <laughs> type orange. Um, but if you used like a glaze, it's really, it, it um, really brings color out, I find anyway enhances the color that's around it. Okay. All right, that's the top of a head, I think. Let's come around the side here and just have a dump of water. Right, oh, I can't remember. I think we've put a base layer down, but I, I will put another one down, I think. I'm going to use white, and I'm using a Prismacolor pencil just because this is my current white of my Polychromos. <laughs> so I'm kind of reserving that, where I have actually a bunch of these. I ordered the bunch uh, when I first started doing colour pencil, and I was only using the Prismacolor that I had um, because particularly with Prismacolors white's really good with blending 
so I've got a bunch of that. That's the only reason I'm using that particular one. But any white will do. And as I said, I'm pretty sure we've done a base layer there, but already. But I just want to put some more down. Make sure it's nice and well covered. I might actually extend it down a little bit into this part here, which is really light as well. Sparrows rousing on somebody out there. And yeah, you can see I'm just working in a circular motion. I'm not being crazy careful or anything, I just want to make sure that there's a goodly amount of it. And you can see that um, the, the Prismacolors are a lot softer, so you use them up a lot quicker. They're wax based rather than um, oil based, so all pencils have their pigment suspended in a clay and then the binder that is used to um, turn that into the tube that goes within the wooden pencil is the thing that makes a difference. So uh, I believe that all of them have a certain amount of wax content in it, but um, then there's some other brands that have more oil versus wax. So waxy pencils are like the um, Prismacolor Premier and uh, the Caradash Luminance. And then oil ones, so they're harder pencils, um, so less crumbly, are the um, Polychromos, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, and the Derwent Studios or Artists. They get called different things in different areas. But um, yeah, so uh, that's just interesting to know. They all work well together. They're, there's no reason you can't use them all together. The only thing is that the waxy ones, with the, the Prismacolor particularly, um, are other artists, I've not had experience with this myself, so I can't say for sure, but other artists have talked about wax bloom, so you get almost, um, what's well, a bloom? It's a sort of a whitish bloom that happens on top of the, the wax, um, the wax lay down after some time, but I believe it's fairly easy to deal with. And if you use it with in conjunction with other pencils, it doesn't seem to happen. Um, but I can't speak to experience from that. I do know that sometimes if you've got many, many layers and you're putting wax, a waxy layer down, it's harder to get your um, like oily layers on top, I suppose. I say wax and oil, they, they really, there really, really is a lot of difference. Um, other than that, I guess one sort of feels a bit more creamy, but the um, they can be a bit more crumbly. Um, yeah, just FYI. <laughs> I have Cold Grey 2 in my hand here. And there's some really nice cold colours here. But I, you know, I love my Polychromos. I love the colors. I love, I love that it's quite a hard pencil. I love working on um, smooth paper. I've tried pastel paper, pastel mat a couple of times now, and it's okay. And I think that I just need to work on it more. But um, I, I do like how it takes the pigment really well. But I just can't get past the tooth on it. Um, I find it really grainy. Uh, and I know that it's so well loved by pastel artists and other colour pencil artists so I think maybe I just need to work with it more but I just I guess I'm used to working on smoother paper too with all the graphite work that I did have done love to do um, but I love I love working with these pencils on smooth paper so the Fabriano Artistico which is what I'm working on here um, there is a new paper from Derwent called Lightfast Paper, which I haven't been able to find in Australia yet, but I ordered some from the UK a little while ago, and I love it too. That's what I did my big great grey owl on. 
um, but it's a smooth paper too. Um, and there are instances where you have to press a little bit harder to get the darkness of pigment that you want, but I still find that working slowly, softly in layers works just as well. So I guess that's one of the bigger complaints from other artists for smooth paper is that it can hurt your hand because you need to press harder, but I really haven't found that myself. Well, not too much. I mean, my hand will hurt after a while if I've been drawing for hours and hours anyway, but my hand also hurts at the end of the day after work from using a mouse, so it's just a, re 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 uh, it's just a repetitive thing, isn't it? Um, that you need to be conscious of and do your exercises. But, um, to be fair, I'm actually trying to find out. Uh, oh, I know. Numbers and colour names. Honestly, it would be really good if all of the brands of pencils kept all of the exact same colour, but just in their own format. <laughs> So that then you would know that, you know, a cold grey three would be the same across a waxy and a um, oil based pencil. Wouldn't that be good? Plus there's there's colours in all of the ranges, including the Prismacolor that I love that aren't available in the pencils that I prefer to use. Um, which is really, you know, it's not good enough, is it? We need to write a letter, I think. Um, but oh yeah I know and honestly that um, I think I've mentioned it before but I certainly have it over on my patreon as well and I'll put another link if I can remember to do that maybe I should write myself a note um, to Karen oh let me bring this out here I think, I think I've shown you before I don't know hang on a minute let me just get rid of this piece of paper that's in the middle of it um, Yeah, Karen Hull. Okay, so I'll try and put a link on um, the description. She has this coloured pencil conversion and comparison charts. And she's an Australian artist. And it's like $20. It's really not expensive at all. But she's done a lot of the hard work. So she has made these... Um, it's like a spreadsheet, really. Where she's got the Polychromos, Prismacolor, Derma Artists, which is what they're mostly sold under in Australia, but they're also called Studios. Uh, the Pablos, that's a whole other thing, they're delicious as well. Luminance, Colorsoft, I have no um, experience with them at all. Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor, I also have no experience with them. And Lightfast. And then she sort of has put swatches of similar colors across the, the board. So it's such a useful chart. And then what I did was I took that and I've made like a little ring binder here, as you can see. And I took out all the swatches and then I've added shiny isn't it? I've added my own colours in when I've purchased them. So A, I know exactly what colours I have on hand. And as you can see, being a pencil artist, I'm a little bit obsessed with <laughs> with the colour with getting pencils. So um, I know exactly what I have on hand. Plus my swatches are a little bit bigger than what Karen's is, is so I was finding and it also depends on how you print it out I mean it gives a really good idea but you know if you've got a crappy printer that doesn't print well print colors well this way I know exactly what it looks like next to them so you know if, if um, color pencil is kind of your jam and you're interested to be able to know how to let me just bring that back up again um, how to choose colors between different brands um, this is really useful and there's another part to the book too where she tries it on different paper so the same color on different papers to give you an idea as well which I think is brilliant so you know forever grateful for her for doing that I have this beside me all the time because seriously I use it often I mean, I have my set wildlife colors, but um, for anything else that's sort of outside that realm, and I'm not really sure, uh, as I say, I've got some studios and stuff, but I don't know them as well as I know my um, polychromos. So that um, is so helpful. It's beyond helpful. 
it's one of those things that you'd save in a fire, you know, like it's really, really helpful for me anyway. So I highly recommend that and I'll leave the book right next to my computer so I remember to put the link for that in again too. Um, I really recommend it. Uh, what have I got here again? Colgo 2. Yes, that's right, over here. Um, there's a couple of light colours in the Prismacolor that I just love. There's like a beige colour, a putty beige. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah, Louise, it's it's brilliant. You totally need to do it. Um, totally need to get one. There is the French greys. I love the French greys in both the Polychromos, uh, in both the Prismacolor and the Luminance. There's no French greys in Polychromos, which is really lacking. Um, the French greys are a really browny sort of grey. They're just beautiful. Um, and then I love the browns that that are in the polychromos but there's not enough of them and I find that the tone of them can be quite similar um, so I've just been working on a lynx and um, let me grab her and there's like five different browns in here but they're the the coloring disparate between them is not great like it's not um, where's the here? So you can even see on the swatch here that, um, like raw umber is obviously very yellowy. Nougat's kind of got a bit of a purpley yellow background. Bister again's quite yellow. Van Dyke and burnt umber are sort of leaning to more towards the red sort of scale more. But there's not a huge uh, amount of difference between them. But the studios have the most amazing browns. Um, let me see if I can find them in my magic book. Here. So you can see that I, when it comes to browns, I've pretty much purchased all of the browns that are available um, from all of the brands that I'm interested in. Um, but the, the, this is the artists, the studios, the browns in that are just so different. Like I love this bronze. This bronze I used a lot in that great grey owl that I did and the copper beach which you can see is kind of similar to the chocolate in the Prismacolor. The colours on this webcam are not entirely precise but uh, yeah so I love the browns in the studio and they're a really hard quite a hard pencil. I love this golden brown too. Oops this is golden down here. Um, yeah, so I really love how hard they are as well. Um, but you still get a really nice amount of pigment down on them. Anyway, gushing about that. Um, come back over here. A bit distracted this morning, aren't I? And I'll come across here with a bit of this grey as well. I don't think I've done any base there. I might just stick some down. Or maybe I have. It's a bit hard to tell. I've got really bright lights above the camera here so that it's nice and bright for the camera. And sometimes it's a bit hard to tell if I've got a light base down when I'm using just the studio lights, which are to the side of me. Um, it's a bit easier to tell. Um, so I'm doing sort of light crisscrossy strokes up on this part here. You do need to use a fairly sharp pencil, except for when you're sort of blending or getting a base colour down. Um, when you use smooth paper, that's one of the big differences between smooth paper and pastel mat. Um, I just had a thought about something that I was going to do before and now I can't remember what I was going to use it for. Um, 
you don't have to work as uh, with a, a sharper pencil on pastel mat or on any of the other sanded sort of pastel type papers um, but once you have a sharp pencil on smooth paper you don't need to press hard so I don't think anyway so um, unless you want to press hard for a really particularly dark section I've got a tiny tiny <laughs> pencil in here somewhere that's what I need to ask Santa for isn't it a whole bunch of pencil extenders pretty sure I've been a good girl this year and I deserve some pencil extenders look at this I mean it's the tiniest thing anyway I've only got two pencil extenders I mean what what pencil artist only has two pencil extenders and they're both in use um, this is this warm grey two uh, and I know I've put cold grey down but I also want to put a little warm grey down on top of it that's just how I like to roll Slowly building up some layers. Little face is really coming in now, isn't it? All right, let's take a little bit of the dark Naples again. No, that's light yellow. Do I want dark Naples? Yeah, I think I want dark Naples. And there's a small amount of it around the edge here. Oops. It's a little golden tinge, a little golden halo. And I might actually, just making sure I haven't got any stuff on my eraser, and pick up a little bit of that darker grey that I used for the outline there, because it's very light. I'm not getting rid of it altogether, just a little touch of it. Oops, throw things. And I did my outline in um, cold grey, cold grey one or cold grey two rather than graphite. It's very light there. And I'm going to get a bit of ivory over the top of that as well. It's really dark down here but there's some nice yellowy undertones to it don't worry too much about the gray that I've got under there um, we're going to be coming in with a lot of darker color over the top So I think we'll go burnt ochre, just a small amount, always working lightly, let your pencil do the work. So yeah, I mean, we are, we are so lucky living where we are when it comes to this pandemic that's happening globally. You know, there is advantages to being on an island sometimes, I think. And Louise, same for you too. 
um, but we still have a lot of restrictions in place which are necessary and I'm appreciative of them so for my we can only have 20 people in a home at once so for my mum's birthday party we're having a very intimate setting she's gonna be 70 so it's a big birthday and um, you know we have quite a large family and mum's friends and stuff so we had to be a bit selective about who we could invite although a lot of mum's sisters live um, far further away or out of state so they wouldn't have been able to come anyway but so we've got we've got our maximum of 20 which will actually be quite nice I think but you know we have to approach things so much differently now don't we I mean Um, Ivory, uh, as I said, I feel very, very lucky to be where I am, and I work in the health industry, um, for my muggle job, my full-time job, so I have ivory now, my tiny, tiny ivory, and I'm just going around this edge here, um, so we're essential workers, so when it first started at the beginning of this year, myself and my team, didn't have any breaks, any holidays or anything. I've only had a week off this whole year. Um, except for a few days here and there. But it's been an exhaustive process and I um, I can't imagine what it must be like for those frontline workers in countries where there's a lot more of it happening than there is here. Yeah, so mandatory wearing of masks. We haven't, like it's recommended here uh, in Melbourne where the last lockdown was. And actually there's a bit of a breakout, I think, in South Australia that um, there was mandatory mask wearing. And it was something that we thought we would probably have to be doing, you know, being in pharmacy too. Um, but that, that hasn't seemed to happen yet. But I do see a lot of people wearing masks, which I think is a good thing. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing by any means. Um, and supermarkets there for a little while made it, well, not mandatory, but really highly recommended it. Um, so I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, but yeah, such a different, such a different experience for us here than what I'm seeing the numbers coming out of a lot of places around the rest of the world. Um, and that, you know, I do, I really feel for everyone. I hope that, you know, everyone stays safe and it's very different. It's been a very different year. It's going to be a very different holiday season this year. Um, I have cold gray three. Sparrow just jumped on the window ledge there. So I'm just continuing to build layers up around. Um, a lot of the borders between our states have been closed too. Some of them have reopened because we've had negligible or no new cases, community transmitted cases in New South Wales and Victoria for a little while. So I believe that Queensland has opened back up now, but um, it's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is a huge, huge country. I think that people don't realise, unless you live here and try to get from one place to another, how big our country is. You know, it's nearly the same size as continental US uh, but our population is so much sparser I think we've got like 26 million people or 23 million people and we mostly live around the coasts because that's the livable area <laughs> in Australia the middle is a bit um, unlivable um, 
so it's you know it's a vastly different experience but you know uh, people who are used to like mine workers and stuff going to WA to to work that was a whole other thing too because all that got shut down um, and I'd love to go to Tasmania I think that Tasmania has started to open up its borders but you know you don't want to be over there and and stuck there <laughs> not able to get back if some break, other breakout happens so I think there's such so um, such minimal traveling by plane at the moment uh, one of my dearest friends works for Qantas and has done for a long time she's fairly high up in there and you know that's a job that you thought was going to be secure forever you know travel industry how amazing so yeah it's really it's um it really challenged the way we think about life in general hasn't it I mean I was supposed to go to Scotland this year your brother's in Perth is he Louise I've never been over to WA I'd love to go have a look um, yeah, I was supposed to be in Scotland this year as part of my mum's birthday present, actually. I was taking her and dad to Scotland and broke my heart not to go, but, you know, that's the least of anyone's concerns, isn't it? Not being able to go on a holiday. But perhaps we get to discover a bit more about our local areas or areas that we can drive to, which is not a bad thing either. So have you been here, Louise? Have you been over to Oz? Have you been to Perth? Um, and I'm just continuing to work around looking for those sort of mid-tone cool greys. And there's quite a lot of them around her face. And adding layers. All about layers. So down here I can see he's getting a bit... Um, What's the word I want? I can see a lot of the paper texture coming through, so I want to get rid of a little bit of that. Um, so, which requires a little bit of blending. Um, but don't be afraid to continue to add layers. And if you add that layers lightly, then you know you're building up in such a way that you're adding depth for one. In different color colors, you get a whole of gamut of the way that they work together and, and show through the paper um, but also if you decide that something's not working right it, you can stop when you've got light layers and not continue or erase it or work on something else around it so light layers are definitely the way to go um, it's beautiful been there a number of times oh is it yeah I hear some fabulous things about it, and um, one of my cousins lived there for, I'll call it my cousin, but lived there for um, a good while and loved it too, so I would love to see it. I'd love to see more of Australia, it's would tend, something that we tend to think of to do when you're older, sort of travel around, um, the whole grey nomad thing, you know, <laughs> get your caravan and travel around. Um, but you know over the next couple of years it may well be that we discover more about travel around in Australia than elsewhere so I'm smoothing out some of that texture lots to Perth and the Gold Coast Perth so far yeah oh you've been everywhere man good on you do you know I really haven't been to Queensland much either when we were younger I went a couple of times but too hot <laughs> although I do really really want to see the barrier reef because you know I don't know how much longer it's going to be with us so that is a de is definitely a goal that might be something that we'll do next year um, but I'm much more into the, the cold weather I love Tasmania I've been there a number of times and as I said I've moved there tomorrow there's so much to discover down there and when I went to Scotland in 2017 I discovered that it really is um, much more similar uh, to Scotland down there so that's probably why I loved it so much oh but there's so much to see in your country too Louise 
I bet, I mean, I want to come and see the um, North Island, but oh my goodness, the South Island, that just blew my mind. It was amazing. Um, I've got dark sepia now. I'm going to start to add some of these really dark areas in down the bottom here, which will help make everything else pop and we'll sort of see where we're going color wise. So really tiny little strokes, nice sharp pencil. Yeah, the um, the sounds that we did there, Milford Sound, and now I'm not going to remember the other one again. You told me last time to starts with a D, does it? Doubtful, doubtful sound. Ah, oh, my goodness, just so amazing. Um, on my mum's side, we have some Norwegian heritage as well, and I'd love to do the fjords and stuff all through there. And I think that, from what I understand, they look quite similar to those beautiful places in New Zealand there. So I mean truly I am very grateful for all the places I've been able to travel to. And I know that it's not something that everybody can do. Um, it is a real privilege. Up until the last couple of years, though, all my travelling was overseas. Well, all my, a couple of my big travels overseas were um, like hiking adventures. So camping, hiking, trekking, not at all glamorous. In Nepal, uh, we didn't shower for like nine days or something. <laughs> So the last couple of treks that I, uh, trips that I've taken to Scotland and to Italy last year, which seems like a millennia ago now, uh, it was very nice and grown up to have nice hotels and <laughs> do all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Symbol music. I oh, look, you know, that's what happens, isn't it? You tend to see things outside your own country first, and even your local area, like. Oh, I don't know. I guess time gets in the way and you're too busy thinking about other things, but you know, there's a lot in my local area that I'm only just sort of starting to discover and I've lived here my whole life. It's a bit sad, isn't it? So you can see the difference that the dark's making already. So I can see the shading that I need to bring in. Um, it's making your eyes pop. But yeah, I totally want to go to the North Island. I want to see uh, Hobbiton and all around there. But I did choose to see the South Island because it's cold. <laughs> I was really happy about that. It was just so beautiful. Um, where else have I been? I've been to South America. I did a six week trek through there. So Peru, Ecuador and just the tiniest bit of Bolivia. And that was hard slog trek, like we did the Inca Trail, uh, very high altitude tre trekking, lots of hard work, but it was beautiful and it's an experience that I'll be forever thankful that I took. Um, and did Nepal with my two brothers actually, that was done in 2014, that was my 40th birthday present to myself. Um, and we trekked to Gokyori, which is in the Everest base, Everest region. It's um, actually a little bit higher than Everest Base Camp, but the valley over, and you get a much better view of um, Everest and the, the mountains around it. And that was amazing too. It was very hard work, but it was amazing. Uh, hey, you haven't been to Hobbiton? Are you a Lord of the Rings? fan um, I, I really want to like <laughs> I like bits of it I just don't I don't go for all the war scenes the fighting scenes but um, I love all the whole Ent thing and some of the other tales that go along with it but I tend to lose interest as soon as we start to get into the fighting sort of stuff um Yes, Nepal was amazing. 
I would go back there again tomorrow, but it's very, um, I mean, I saw a lot of poverty in South America as well, but some of it can be quite confronting in Nepal, I found, in, in um, Kathmandu, the uh, mountainous regions, that was, a, it was so different to Kathmandu, that was just wonderful. Uh, where else have I been? I went to Scotland for just a couple of weeks. I actually went on an art retreat with Ivy Newport there. It was her first art retreat. I've been to Italy. That was last year. I went there with Ivy again and Jean-Marie Webb, who's from South Africa and a good friend. Um, been to the US a couple of times. I actually lived there for 12 months as an exchange student when I was 16. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I was saying though. It, it is hard. You do tend to neglect the places around you that are closest. So, um, Just adding, uh, did I even tell you? Oh yeah, dark sepia. Yeah. And I can see it needs pumping up inside these other places as well. And we need to add some depth of colour in this darkness as well, but this is a nice beginning. But I have to say, everybody was super, super friendly in um, New Zealand, Louise. Like, I mean, I know you're, um, like Australia, your tourist industry is a huge part of your um, GDP, but I found absolutely everybody fantastic, even the road workers, you know, very nice. It was really, really lovely. We had a fantastic time. We didn't have a single bad experience at all, like negative in any way. Everything was wonderful. And you think you're doing so much when you go on holidays and it's only after you come back that you think, oh, I wish I'd spent more time just sitting and looking and doing nothing in some places. You know, putting your feet in the earth. And it would be interesting for me now to go back to a lot of those places because I do tend to look at things very differently now that I've been focusing on art for such a long time. Well, such a long time. For the last couple of years. Um, and particularly this last 12 months, like my practice has changed dramatically and... Um, my my practice is much more intentional and I crave this practice now to be honest um, and I feel like I have built up um, a, a, a more mindful presence understanding of being present that I think that you know would be really beneficial when traveling and stuff now too I, I understand better how to be present. I didn't really say that very well. But <laughs> oh, you did that one in, with Katrina, did you? Um, she's so lovely too. How fantastic. I'd love to go to Ireland. So that would have been fantastic, yeah. And Claire Delaney. I don't know her. I'll have to have a look at her. <laughs> Auckland's not always, that's like Sydney though. Yeah, I think once you get the larger cities then things are different anyway. I've got burnt ochre again now. I'm going to go over some of this dark sepia a little bit. Just a light glaze over. Yeah, I know that Jean-Marie had, I think it was with Ivy too, had a Ireland treat um, planned for this year too, which unfortunately had to be cancelled too. Um, 
Yeah, it's something that I've actually spoken with Jean Marie about before about how to run those sort of things because it's something I'm very interested in doing myself as well. But I think that I would do my retreat, or maybe I should do it in New Zealand. I think I would do it in Scotland though, and I, I would like for it to be somewhere probably close to like the Cairngorms, which is the national park one of the national parks there that have lots of animals in it because I would like it to be the sort of retreat where we can go out into nature and sit with it and observe it, um, do some botanical art as well as um, be completely absorbed and inspired by the natural world around us. So, you know, that's, that's a, a long-term goal of mine if we're ever able to travel again. <laughs> yeah, that's the history, isn't it? It really is. Um, and it's mind-blowing for those of us who've come from um, countries that are incredibly old and have an old um, population indigenous population but we're only colonized fairly recently we don't have the buildings and the um infrast like the the in industrial infrastructure that these places in europe and the u.s for that matter have uh, mexico mexico is another place i've been it's just amazing i didn't spend anywhere near enough time there either um So that, that's uh, it's coming along there. I do want to, and, and the more you do, the more you want to do. That's the thing. Let's go on another place I'd love to go. You were born in England, were you, really? Oh, family there is brilliant because you can go and stay with them. You can sponge off them instead of having to try and find accommodation, see? Um, so I want to darken up a little bit more up the top here too to match what's going on down here just because I thought it was finished up here yeah I absolutely adored Scotland I, I've never felt anything like it I got out of the taxi in Edinburgh and I actually nearly cried there on the spot I did have a bit of a cry once I got into the hotel apart from the fact that I was really really freaking tired because <laughs> my plane got cancelled in Dubai and it was the, I had almost 48 hours without sleep because I can't sleep on the plane. It was a whole thing. It's a whole story. Anyway, yeah, I nearly cried because it, I felt like I'd come home. It was an insane feeling. I've never felt anything like it. Yeah, castles, man, castles are amazing. And again, we don't have any um, experience with that here either. I, we, did, we did lots of castles in Scotland because I stayed for a couple of weeks afterwards and one of my brothers came out and met me and we did a lot of travelling as well. Um, I have cold grey one here and I just want to pump up some of the bluey aspect to the edges of these little face feathers. I think that, oh my goodness, yeah it is the history and that's what I found in Italy too, just being completely mind blown by it. I mean you see it in books, you see it in movies, but it's nothing like seeing it in person. Okay, I want to take warm grey two again, which I should stop putting that in this cup because it's too small, it gets down the bottom. Um, warm grey, yes. And I'm going to go over all of this, soften it blend it a bit and get ready for a second round you'll notice that I'm leaving this bit here because it's really really white so I want to build up the colors around it first Now I can see that I want to bring a bit more of that pinky colour in on her nose too. So I've got cinnamon back and I'm just going to put another layer down. Oh, bugger. 
And I managed to put it as good old eraser. Gonna put a little glaze of that over the top of the greys here. A little bit of reflective glaze. Oh look at that sweet face, would you? Isn't she lovely? Um, 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 um. Now it's a little bit darker. I think I'm going to take a warm grey. Yeah, warm grey four. Just lightly start to bring in some of the really dark, or really dark, the darker spots in amongst all these little ruffles here. Face ruffles. I think everybody deserves face ruffles. Part of the process as I work is thinking about how things would feel under under finger, like for me to touch them, but also how they would feel to actually have them. So I'm, I'm just thinking about how it would feel to have little face ruffles. I quite like the idea. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever had um, birds, like as in pet birds. I had a quarry and a cockatiel who died tragically young, but she just loved to be scratched around her little face feathers. And I think that they'd be really rather delightful to have them. I am, I am funny really <laughs> to put it down each week. <laughs> Because I've, I start to have conversations as I am working with a, with a piece, so I tend to get lost in that. Then, um, where is my? There it is. There. My, I know that's two. Oh, there it is. There. I've got my cold grey one, and I'm just going to put a little layer of that down here okay let's bring a little bit of the cold grey just a few little strokes that show the direction of the feathers, how they're sort of sweeping down from her eye. And I'm not pressing hard. Um, maybe a little harder than soft, I guess, so like a medium pressure. But it's more the act of doing multiple strokes that helps to sort of darken it up. It's, putting, it, it's essentially putting multiple layers down. There is this quite um, defined shadow here, and it's a bit of an odd colour. I'm going to use um, the light beige first. Just a very light layer of it. And then cold grey two. Yeah. 
now. Okay. And I'm going cold and then warm and then cold and then warm, but it just builds up layers and that's really what it's all about is the layers. And I do want a little bit more. I might use that pink again. subtleness there and I can see that I also need to darken the shadow around this way a little bit more so I'm gonna go cold gray 4 here and the shadow comes down this way The shadows that you add make the light areas stand out more, so they're really important. And I am finding, to be honest, that I am working a little differently with this one because there is that stop start. Um, I'm just adding a little bit more of that over here, darkening that up a little bit. Um, whereas I don't necessarily go back as much to an area as I have with this, but I think it's because there's the gaps in my conversation with her, which doesn't matter. I mean, that's absolutely fine. Um, and it's, an, it's actually quite a nice way of working. I love that she's sitting, I have some hooks on my um, wall over there, and I love that she's sitting up on my, my wall all week waiting patiently for me to scratch those face feathers with her. This is really quite dark in here so I'll add another layer dark down and then I'm going to get some um, burnt umber I think burnt umber which is that yellowy brown that should work really nicely with the dark sepia and the yellow that we've put in there. That's good. outside. We've all had their morning seed and I say that and the coel starts up again. Um, settle down for a little morning nap. day there. I'm just noticing there's quite a bit more brown in here than I had. Um, yes, and we'll come back to her same channel, same time, next week I think. We should finally finish off a face. I know it's it's a process, right? So it's something that you can't rush. Well, if you can't, if you do, you you know you run the risk of losing some detail. But I also don't want to rush either. I 
get to have these conversations with these creatures by spending time with them. So, you know, that's something that's really important to me and I enjoy it and I look forward to it and I learn from it. I gain connection from it. Um, so it's a real gift, it's a real um, privilege to do that, uh, to honour my non-human kin. So I really enjoy these conversations and I really enjoy having conversations with you guys too as well. So I think, yeah, let's come back to her again next week. Or we'll do any of the um, finalization of the face. Because another thing is, it, you know, when you, when you stop for a little while, you see things that you may have missed otherwise. So it's quite a nice thing to have a long conversation to... Um, yeah, so we'll finish off any little bits on the face that we want to. We'll start working on these neck ruffles. And, um, yeah, have some more fun next week. All right, my lovelies, I hope you have a fantastic day, a wonderful weekend. I hope you find some creative adventures somewhere along the way. And don't be afraid to reach out and ask if you've got any questions. And I'd love to see your um, creatures as well, any of your creations. You're welcome to share anything you would like in um, my Facebook group or send me a picture if you would like to. So thank you so very much. Um, and I'll see you next week. Take care.